Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, this evening's webinar is um, going to be brought to you by the advisory services in Chagas, Riscom and Longford. And this evening we are covering the BIS, the uh, CRIS and ANC on those various uh, area-based schemes. And uh, also looking at uh, land eligibility and minimum stock and rate and uh, entitlements. We have two speakers. We have Donald McCabe first up, and we also have uh, Shane Devaney. Um, we also have uh, Karen Kenahan here. Karen is covering the questions and answers. Uh, questions and answers, uh, uh, that, that section will be covered uh, at the end. Uh, so if you do come up with any questions during the presentations, you can type them in and we'll get to them at the end of the presentations. Um, Questions will all be answered live, so we won't be typing any answers uh, to questions. Uh, this video is being recorded and uh, you will be able to watch it back on YouTube. So um, we're roughly talking about 20 minutes uh, per speaker and um, approximately 10 minutes at the end uh, for questions. Uh, without further ado, we'll ask uh, Donal. Um, to prepare uh, his uh, presentation. Thanks very much, Sean. Can you see that okay? Yeah, that, that looks okay, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, good evening, everybody. Um, just for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm just going to be talking about the, the BIS scheme in particular. Um, the BIS scheme will be governing how we utilize our entitlements going forward. Um, Shane then will cover some of the other aspects connected with those entitlement based payments and I will just come in then just before the Q&A just do a couple of examples just to give you an idea in terms of how people's payments will be changing depending on their position in other words depending on the value of the entitlement the number of hectares to hold that kind of thing okay so I suppose just some of the key messages with all of this like the direct payment schemes are changing more than every other uh, scheme, I suppose, with this new cap, the change in the cap that's coming in this year in 2023. So under the, the old cap, the majority of farmers were in receipt of both BPS and greening. Um, now, a lot of grassland farmers, you know, some of them may not, even though they were in receipt of the greening payment, they wouldn't have given it potentially too much consideration because um greening came automatically to a grassland farmer if you're over 80 percent grassland tillage farmers so those farmers with tillage would have to give it that little bit more consideration um you know they might have had to put in you know various numbers of crops maybe two crops or three crops uh depending on the amount of tillage that they had but the, the bps entitlement part of the payment was worth approximately 70 percent the overall payment whereas the greening proportion therefore was rough, roughly worth 30 percent so if you look at the average entitlement then, so remember you, you need a hectare, you needed a hectare of eligible land to be able to claim uh, each entitlement. Shane is going to cover that in more detail in terms of what eligible land constitutes now. But if the majority of farmers whose farming systems wouldn't have changed too much, you know, over the last maybe 10 years or so, their number of hectares would have roughly equaled the number of entitlements that they held. So the average entitlement was approximately 169 euros. And then you had a green on top of, of around about 74 euros then um, on, on top of that. Um, now that was the average. And there was obviously big variations in those. All entitlement values will change in 2023. Um, some A big thing in regard to entitlements and the sale of entitlements prior to this. So over the last number of years, if a farmer was selling some of their basic payment entitlements, you know, if they had extra entitlements and they, they wanted to sell off the surplus, the department would have clawed back 20% of those entitlements. It's sort of, I suppose, like a, a tax on selling entitlements. There will be no clawback on the sale of entitlements in 2023 and 2024. So that's an important thing to remember. So some people with surplus entitlements, they may choose um in this year or next year to sell their entitlements altogether um other options would be just to, to lease out your entitlements as well for 
for one year or more. The greening proportion of the payment is gone. So greening, as we did know it, is no longer, and it's going to be replaced with the eco scheme um, payment, which, which Shane will go into more detail on. A big thing with the eco scheme, though, is the payment is no longer linked to the entitlement. So with BPS, if you didn't have a basic payment entitlement, you couldn't claim the green and part of the payment. So the green and was linked, green and payment was linked to the entitlement payment. From this year on, that link will be broken. So farmers could apply for the eco scheme and claim the eco scheme without having any entitlements whatsoever on their ground, which, which, is, which is a big change. Okay, so just some of the, the new terminology just that we'll have to try and get our heads around in the, over the next couple of months. So what was the BPS is now becoming the Basic Income Support for Sustainability. So that's the BIS scheme. So the BIS is replacing the BPS. The ECO scheme, as I alluded to there, is the new Greenan. So ECO scheme is replacing the Greenan. There is a new... Um, there is a new payment, a new part of the scheme called the CRIS scheme. So that is, it's often referred to as front loading, whereas there's a, where there will be a payment on the first 30 hectares. Again, Shane is going to go into more detail on that one. And um, the, the young farmer scheme is getting a big boost as well. Um, that's gone up to 170 euros per hectare there, thereabouts, which, which will be covered in a, a subsequent webinar to this. And for the tillage farmers, then you have the, the coupled income support, so no, previously known or commonly known as the protein aid. So BPS and green, and as we knew it in, in 2022 and before, since 2015, that is now going to become, for the majority of farmers, the BIS, CRIS and ECO scheme. So BIS is replacing BPS and the green in proportion of the scheme is going to be replaced by ECO. And then there'll be an additional CRIS scheme then on top of that. So what was the BPS and green and really now would be what was two would be broken into to three from now on, the BIS, the CRIS and the, the ECO scheme. OK, so just a little bit more detail in regard to entitlements. So there's no new allocation in the regulations for the BIS scheme. So there's no reference years. So the number of entitlements that you held last year will be the number of, the ent of entitlements that you, start off, uh, that you start off with this year. So there's no, as, as it says there, no new reference years, nothing to consider that way. Um, the number of entitlements stays the same. The new average of each is adjusted to match the fund and ceiling. So the new average is around about 155 euros. You can see, just see in the previous slide there, it was approximately 169. So you could say, well, look, that's a drop, which it is. But remember, there is additional components to our overall, overall payment now, the BIS, the CRIS and the ECO scheme, whereas before it was just BPS and Greening. The leveling up of entitlements or convergence will continue. Um, what, what it will mean is that by 2026, um, it, the, the lowest entitlement value out there will be 85% of the average. So that leveling up of entitlements and leveling down of entitlements um, in some cases will, will continue. So that, that convergence um, is, is, is there to stay until, until 2026 at least. So after convergence has finished in 2026, all entitlements will fall into a range from 125 euro to 285 euro. Transfers of entitlements are still possible in the usual way. So around last summer, last back end, there was talk uh, by the Department of Agriculture that entitlements that would have been traded by farmers who would have had most of their entitlements leased out, that if they were going to rent out their entitlements for anything less than five years, that there would be a penalty on those entitlements, that there'd be a clawback on those entitlements. That is no longer happening. So transfers of entitlements, really, it is, it's kind of business as normal in regards to those in terms of whether you want to sell them or rent them out. But as I was saying, the big change for, 20, for this year and for next year is that for farmers that choose to sell their entitlements without land, those entitlements will not 
be um, in receipt of the, the 20% clawback. Um, so that may encourage uh, um, a greater number of entitlements to be sold this year. We just have to wait and see. Um, all farmers have received a statement of entitlements for 2022, for last year, obviously. So you, you should, if you rummage back through the paperwork, you should be able to see what the number of entitlements you held for last year was and the value of each entitlement. And they should be receiving another statement um, for the new cap shortly. So outlining what your, your BIS entitlements are. Um, I will, as I was saying at the start of my presentation, I will go through the calculator that is available to everyone I'm on the Department of Agriculture website, giving you an indication in terms of what your, the value of your entitlements are likely to be um, going forward between now and 2026. So in terms of the, the clawback changes, so as I was saying, lifting of the current clawback and entitlement sold with Outland for 2023 and 2024 only. So the, uh, the Department of Agriculture are saying that from 2025, that clawback will come back in again. So really, I suppose it's, it's, it's farmers that are maybe sitting on the fence in terms of whether well, look, they're not sure whether to sell entitlements or lease out entitlements. Some may decide just to make the jump and sell the entitlements um, this year or next. Um, the, the idea in that is, from the department's perspective, it, it's going to facilitate handovers where entitlements are being sold and generational renewal. Um, Capping not um, of huge concern to the majority, but will will obviously be of concern to some. If you're in receipt of over 100,000 in BIS entitlements, there will be a 100% cap on those. And between 60,000 and 100,000, you'd have an 85% 85, 85 reduction. So that, that means that equates to a maximum BIS payment of 66,000. Now that's just on the BIS scheme. That's not including the CRIS or the ECO scheme. Um, as I said, it won't it won't obviously um, apply to the majority on this call, but it will it will apply to or on this webinar, but it will apply to, to some people. Um, so the BIS is payment on payment entitlements and the eligible hectare. So the eligible hectare rule will it is still there. In other words, you won't get paid a BIS entitlement unless you have an eligible hectare. It's just the definition of eligible hectare is changing compared to what it was last year. And that is what, what Shane is going to cover now shortly. As well as having the eligible hectare, you have to be classed as an active farmer and have uh, an appropriate level of agricultural activity on your farm as well. Um, and just I suppose to, to finish up for now in regards to circumvention, look, it's an important point um, that the department have covered with us. And I suppose our role as advisors is just to make sure that um, our clients are, are fully briefed in this as well. Um, so circumvention, what the department consider circumvention is that, you, that you're artificially creating conditions to obtain benefit or getting around the rules. So the new common agricultural policy will be considerably stricter on this point. Um, it was in the last couple of years, but the department are keen to clamp down on this even more than what the, they are at the moment. So there's some examples of what circumvention may involve would be splitting herds purely to avoid capping. So um, the, the, the slide that I went through there in regards to capping of um, in, entitlements, um, you know, if, if herds were just split purely to avoid that, that's the, something that the department will be monitoring that they'll be looking out for. And this is a fairly big one, and this can go on, um, you know, to to some extent, you know, every year um, I, I'd be having this conversation with um, with clients or prospective clients, you know, in regards to particularly those applying for the National Reserve. So if you're applying to the National Reserve and you are acquiring land, if there is entitlements to be got with that land, so in other words, if the farmer is retiring and there are, there are entitlements on that land, you should not be choosing not to take those entitlements because you know that you foresee that you'll benefit from the national reserve um, the department refer to that as circumvention so if if a farmer has entitlements you should you would be expected to take the entitlements that is allocated not to the land but that is associated with that land 
So what the department don't want a situation is they don't want a situation where, let's say, a retiring farmer, for example, um, transfers over their land, let's say, via lease uh, to a farmer, then they sell their entitlements or rent out the entitlements, pocket money as a result of that. And then the young farmer comes in, applies for the National Reserve and gets entitlements that way too. Like they did class that as double funding that they're basically they're basically paying for two sets of entitlements on the one area ground and that is circumvention and that will if if if, if that is is spotted which would be relatively easy for the department to do that um you know that's when you know there there the, the, the questions will be asked so applications to the, the young farmer scheme where the young farmer is not in financial or managerial control as well so what they mean by that, and, and is there is unfortunately farmers that lose out on the young farmer scheme every year because of this, is where the farmer, like a lot of, in, in, in some cases, the farmers, you know, the young farmer that is on the herd number and drawn down, herd number drawn down the young farmer support, the young farmer might not really be aware of what's going on on, in, on the farm. And in some cases, unfortunately, you know, that the young farmer mightn't even be in the country for um, significant periods of time. So obviously that the department will, class that has circumvention and um, you know as I said there there will be penalties as a result so there are significant penalty risks for the farmer and possibly the advisor as well you know if the advisor is found to be um, facilitating that you know that the advisor um, could be in trouble there too so just, just be aware of that um, that's the last slide that I have for the moment as I said I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll hand Back to you uh, first, Sean, um, and sure, I'll, I'll go through those examples then just a little bit later on. Okay, okay, Donald, uh, thank you uh, very much for, for that. So uh, we're going to bring Shane Devaney in uh, next. Uh, Shane is going to cover uh, uh, Chris and go into more detail on the eco schemes. And we'll be back then to Donald with a few examples uh, for you, okay? Um, John, can you see that? I, I can see. You need to put it into slide yeah, mode. Yeah, just um, I don't know. How's that? Yeah, that looks fine. That okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay, Grand Chain, thank you. Okay, Um. good evening, folks. Um. Look, at, I'm going to follow on from Donald there. Um. <clears throat> we, I have a good bit of stuff to cover here. Um. There's a lot of, uh, lot of information here in this. And look, because... As advisors, we're, I suppose, a few months trying to get our heads around it. So I suppose for you to take this in the next 15, 20 minutes, don't be surprised if you're a little bit confused after some of it. But as I say, look back on it uh, if you have to and ask questions at the end. I will do our best in to give you a better understanding. So the five things I'm going to cover are here is the CRIS, uh, the new front loading, which is part of the, the new uh, BIS payment. Uh, which was the basic payment. Uh, I'm going to cover eco schemes, ANC, uh, agricultural activity, and land eligibility. So, first one we're looking at here is on the CRIS. And basically, this here is here. it's a new measure to redistribute from larger to smaller and medium sized farms. Now, farmers will receive a payment here of approximately 40 euros per hectare up to a maximum of 30 hectares. Uh, so the max benefit there anybody will get is 1200 euros. It's independent of payment of entitlements, but one payment entitlement will be needed. So in order to get this Chris payment, um, you need to be uh, getting paid on at least one entitlement on your farm. Look, look, majority of people, this won't be an issue, but there could be a couple of people out there uh, where they might have no entitlements of that, that they need to have one entitlement where they're getting paid on. So to give three examples here, <clears throat> you have farmer A, um, the, uh, 20 hectares, and they're getting 40 euros a hectare under this crisp payment, so they'll get paid a max of 800 euros. Farmer B, uh, you see here, they have 30 hectares, they get 40 euros a hectare, so they get their, and that's example, 1200 euros. Farmer C, the 50 hectares, but they'll only get paid up to 30 at 40 euros a hectare, and the same as farmer B, they'll only get paid 1200 euros. So that crisp payment makes up, um, along with what Donald showed earlier on, the the the, the bis the bis the entitlement value, and the the eco scheme. The three Gs together are going to make up your new payment under the single farm payment scheme. 
So next thing I'm going to look at is the eco scheme. Um, I suppose what is the, the eco scheme? So on that there, I suppose the definition is it's an agri-environmental scheme that rewards farmers for undertaking actions that are beneficial to climate, biodiversity, water quality, and the environment. There's eight of these agricultural practices which you can pick from, and uh, you have to pick uh, two of these each year. Um, this will make up 25% approximately of your new uh, basic payment. Uh, so it is something that uh, you will need to look at in order to get the max under your, your new uh, basic payment scheme. There is three enhanced uh, options. What that means is you can double up on some of them and uh, they can count as two, up, two actions uh, in that scenario. Now, the administration of the eco scheme. So it's not um, compulsory. So you can choose to take on these actions or not. Look, uh, everybody will because they're going to get paid for doing it. Um, so that's the first thing on it. Uh, you have to successfully deliver two agricultural practices uh, to qualify. So you have to uh, pick two of these um, these agricultural uh, practices or actions. And just depending on the uptake, the predicted value of each of the of, of the SECO scheme per hectare will be 65 to 70 euros per year. So these are the eight actions. I'm going to go through them now in a little bit more detail as we go on. First one there, you can see space for nature. Second one, extensive livestock production. Uh, third one, limiting chemical nitrogen usage. Uh, fourth one, AP4, planting native trees and hedgerows. AP5 is use of GPS controlled fertilizer spreader sprayers. Uh, AP6 is soil sampling and appropriate liming. Uh, your AP7 there is planting of a break. Uh, crop and the last one there is sowing of a multi species ward. So, the first one to look at here is the uh, space for nature, the agricultural practice one. Now, space for nature, this is a new term being brought in this year under the, in, under the, 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 the BIS uh, application. Uh, basically, everybody, it's made up of non productive areas and landscape features. So, your hedgerows, your ditches, your drains, this all makes up this space for nature on the farm. Everybody needs to have a minimum of 4% of the farm uh, in, uh, making up an area uh, for space for nature uh, with these features. That's the minimum requirement. Now, where a farmer has at least 7% of the farm uh, designated as space for nature, this will count as one action under the eco scheme. And you see down here, if a farmer has 10% uh, of the area designated as space for nature, this will count as two actions. So if you're lucky enough to fall into that category where more than 10% of your farm is space for nature, you won't have to worry about any of these other actions I'm gonna go through. Um, these will tick the box here uh, in relation to two actions to be picked under the eco schemes. Now, the most important thing here you see in the red right, by selecting this option, farmers uh, advisors are confirming that their uh, agricultural practice uh, uh, under this uh, one is an esti uh, estimate is accurate and the features exist in the ground. What that means basically, when you get your maps in the next week or two, you want to look over your maps to make sure that whatever is marked as a hedge on it or whatever is marked as a drain on it is correct. Because um, there will be ground inspections done in these uh, during the year. And uh, they will be checking to see um, that the, the, the maps are correct, what they sent out. So it's important just to take a look over them uh, before you bring them into us to make sure that you're happy with what's on them in relation to these uh, landscape features. So if you do need to pick other uh, uh, actions with this, um, I suppose before I move on, as from most of our clients looking at them, I suppose, on the space for nature, a, nearly most of them seem to be over the 10%. Uh, now there will be an add that will fall underneath it. So if you do, uh, you're looking here at agricultural practice too, which is extensive livestock production. Again, a lot of people will tick this box. So if you're uh, stocked less than 1.4 livestock units per hectare uh, for the calendar year, basically you will, this will qualify you for one of the actions. And if you happen to be stocked under 1.2 livestock units per hectare, this will, uh, it's an enhanced option. So your two actions could be fulfilled in this if you're uh, not stocked more than 1.2 livestock units per hectare. 
Um, you need to have a minimum stocking rate of 0.1 LU per hectare. That is a requirement, similar to ANC. Uh, when they're looking at stocking rate, uh, it's based on the 2022 stocking rate, uh, and you need to have the, the stock on the farm for a minimum of 28 weeks. We would say normally round up to seven months, but it's 28 weeks to be exact. You can use your 2023 stocking rate uh, if you didn't have stock in 2022, but you must continue to use current year stocking rate thereafter. Third one here, you can pick third action is limiting chemical nitrogen usage. Again, I think a lot of people will qualify for this. It's based here, you see a little table on the right and uh, the stocking weight band. So basically um, it's based on your stocking rate and what chemical nitrogen you can apply in relation to that. Um, just show you here, as you can see here, Brassland stocking rate here in 2022, if you're less than equal to 90 kgs of organic nitrogen per hectare, which would be uh, a lot of a lot of clients of ours. You, if you put out no more than two bags, he says there are 73 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, which is two bags of can per acre uh, across the farm for each acre. If you're putting out no more than that, that will qualify you as one of the actions. Um, then if you, then you see, I suppose, a bit of other clients in this range here. So the majority of clients would fall between these two ranges here. So a lot of people will take that box for, I suppose, limiting the amount of nitrogen usage in the farm. Uh, they're, they're already doing it. it um, just back. It's not open to organic farmers uh, or partnerships or organic herds. Uh, they look at the stocking data based on the nitrous register and the farmer must select which band is relevant to them when to come in and do the BPS with us. Uh, agricultural practice four is if you want to plant uh, hedges and trees, you can pick this option. You need a minimum of three trees per hectare or one meter hedgerow per hectare. So I suppose an example there, if you did 20 hectare farm, you'd have to plant uh, 60 trees uh, in, in that year, if you pick for that year, and if you keep picking it each year after that, it's 63 every year after that. Or if the hedge law, you have to pick uh, it's one meter per, he uh, per hectare, 20 hectares, that'd be 20 meters of hedge law per year. And again, the same story, if you pick it every year after that, it's you just pick the, it's 20 meters you have to plant. If you want to enhance this option, it counts as two actions, you double up it. So instead of three trees per hectare, you go with six, and the same with the hedge law, or you can do a mix of trees and hedge law. So that option might be attractive to some people if they need to pick it. Just here at the bottom, you cannot plant trees on designated Natura or breeding wood or areas. Now, agricultural practice five is the use of the GPS control spreader uh, or sprayer. Um, look, I suppose this application of all chemical fertilizer, compound or liquid, or the plant protection products can be applied with a GPS control spreader or sprayer can be your own machine or the contractor service, minimum amount to be applied. I suppose in that example, if you are getting a contractor in to spread your fertilizer, this option probably will work for you because most contractors now will have a GPS control spreader. Uh, the same with the tillage lads and the sprayers, um, they probably have the same thing. So I might take a box on as well. The uh, organic farmers can apply if I did spread or spray organic materials. Spares must, uh, for the spare side, you must have greater than 50% arable land to be eligible on your application. Farmers must be a uh, trained professional user of using their own sprayer. And the minimum you have to spread is one ton of chemical fertilizer or in the tillage side, where you're spraying is a minimum of five liters uh, of plant protection products. Uh, action six, uh, cultural practice six is soil sampling and Basically, you have to carry out soil sampling on all your eligible hectares and apply lime as well in accordance with the results. It's only available uh, every three years. So let's say, for example, if you pick it this year, you can't pick it again for another three years. Uh, not open to irrigation, farmers can use your samples from 2022, providing they're taken after the 16th of September. And again, herds uh, greater, stock and weight greater than 130 kgs organic nitrogen per hectare. An arable must complete uh, SA8 samples. That's where you have to get them tested for the amount of uh, soil organic matter. You need resistance to uh, prove all this as well. And then under this, it's one soil sample for every three hectares. Under nitrates, it's one soil sample for every five hectares for nitrates. So it's a bit, uh, there's more samples need for this uh, action if you pick it. Uh, people in, who are going into acres uh, and they're doing soil samples. I don't think this will double up if you want to do it. 
um, you'll have to do separate for this again. So you have to keep that in mind. Then the last two are here together. You got uh, practice seven and eight. You got planting a uh, break crop, uh, which is planting, uh, that's uh, planting a break crop of beans, peas, oilseed, rape, oats, or any combination of these on at least 20% of the arable area. Uh, greater than 50.1% of the land must be arable and 20% of the arable land to be planted with a break crop in year of application. Break crop must be in the ground before the 15th of July as well in the year of application. And the last one here is sowing a multi-species sward. Uh, there'd be, I suppose, people are getting an interest in this sort of thing. Uh, if you are, is you have to sow a multi-species sward on at least 7% of the eligible hectares in the year the action is selected. A uh, minimum of three-year maintenance rule when planting the multi-species sward in the eco. So you have to maintain it for the three years. And it's not permitted on mature or not uh, nature reserves, uh, commerce, etc. Um, so that is your eight agricultural practices. As I said earlier on, most people won't have to worry about these because they'll have more than 10% uh, of their area in the space for nature, which will tick the box for the two actions required. But if not, you'll have to look at some of these options to see what will suit you. Now, the third thing I'm going to talk about here on the night is the area national constraints, or some people call this the headage payment, the payment that comes in uh, September. Uh, traditionally, you need to have stock on the farm uh to get this payment that is still the case um there's no change to the area designated which you can pay up to 30 hectares there's no change to the payments rates so the same as before and your anc application as is usually submitted through the online base application that's been done up the um, stocking rate requirements in this um, here, ANC, the minimum stocking rate is 0.1 livestock units per hectare. That used to be 0.15, so they brought it back to 0.1. Uh, the 2023 ANC payment will be based on the 2022 stocking profile. That is new, where before they would have based it on the stock in the current year. Uh, but if a farmer did not reach the minimum stocking requirement in 2022, they are given the option that you can use 2023 instead. The minimum is still equivalent to one euro per hectare, which has always been the case, because they've also changed the livestock units for the, the stock as well. So it doesn't, people, I suppose, with the stock and race that, the, that would have qualified them before, especially the people on the seven month system, um, pop the same stock and rate should qualify them again. There's a 28 week retention period, or to, I suppose, in more simple terms, you round it up to seven months, uh, which would, would gain if people have the stock for seven months. Continuously without a break, they will qualify for the payment. Breeding mares must breed a foal in the previous two years. And the last one here is only 50% of the stocking requirement can be fulfilled by using donkeys. Up to a couple of years ago, uh, your donkeys would fulfill the full stocking requirement, but then they changed it a couple of years ago. So if you have donkeys, you'll also, they'll only do 50% and you need to keep livestock uh, along with that to make up the, the other 50%. Um, again, Active farmer, there was a lot of discussion about this over the last couple of years uh, when we were waiting for this new uh, cap deal to be uh, uh, finalized and uh, what is an active farmer. So you can be satisfied in a number of ways. Indicating what type of other farming activities that will be carried out by the applicant. Um, look, if you have the, the stock on the farm and you need a minimum stock on level of 0.1 livestock units per hectare. So that's what you need on the farm. It's based on the stock held during again 2022, and that will be calculated by the department uh, in the same way as carried out uh, calculation for the ANC. Okay, that's so if you have the stock, you're, you will be considered an active farmer. You tick them boxes there. Now, if you're some clients we deal with don't have stock, and as a board, if, if, the, if this active farmer status is not satisfied, here you see in the red writing by stocking level, then additional steps required by applicant as part of the business application. Applicants will have to choose for, uh, from a menu of options to indicate how they will satisfy this active farmer requirement. Okay, so you can see here the first one here is just highlighted here now. So here, meet the minimum stocking rate of 2023. We discussed that already. But yeah, if you don't have the stock in 2022, they're given the option in 2023 to go out and buy stock to meet the requirement. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can provide evidence by making hay, silage, or topping, etc. But you will need a receipt from a contractor or a geotag photo to demonstrate activity. Uh, 
You can also provide evidence of landscape feature maintenance, example, receipt from a contract or a geotag photo. An example there would be, I uh, suppose, trimming of hedgerows, something like that. So just need, uh, if you got a contractor in, get a receipt off them to show that you were the one uh, paying for it. Also, you can provide receipts for seed, fertilizer, pesticides, etc. Uh, but it has to be in the applicant's name. And if none of them apply, then there is a text uh, box available um, and you can put in what agricultural activity you did carry out uh, is not covered by any of these. So I think most people, one way or another, will qualify as an active farmer. It is fairly broad. Um, so just to keep that in mind, just to get rid of this. Uh, now, the last thing I'm going to cover here is land eligibility. Uh, Dole mentioned this already. There is a change on this, I suppose. There's a lot of talk about scrub and trees and woodland all becoming available for payment now under the new uh, base payment or what we call it, what was the basic payment. So parcels can have up to 50% of beneficial features. Example here is scrub, trees, right? They're beneficial features uh, without it impacting on the eligible area. So what that means is, I suppose, take an example, if you had a 10 hectare parcel, right? Um, and 40% of that parcel is covered in scrub and trees. Well, under the old cap or under the basic payment in 2022, 40% of this parcel would be ineligible. So it's not eligible for payment. So that leaves only six hectares of that 10 hectare parcel uh, eligible for BPS. Now, the good news is under the new land eligibility rules, um, uh, this parcel is now eligible for pay payment, the whole parcel. So ex this example, the whole 10 hectares uh, become eligible for payment because again, staying here, less than 50% of the parcel is covered in scrub. So once that's the case, the whole parcel becomes eligible for payment. So this will free up land for a lot of people, extra land, give them a little bit of breathing space for their title and entitlements. I might give uh, some people the option to lease in entitlements if they want. And the good news as well, this extra land will also be eligible for payment for the eco scheme as well. Uh, be eligible for that. So there should be, that should, I suppose, help to enhance uh, a number of people's payments. So I suppose to summarize the whole lot, I suppose on it all, just try and give a quick uh, overview on it. Everyone will get paid a crisp payment of approximately 40 euros a hectare up to 30 hectares, providing they get paid a one entitlement, one active entitlement they're getting paid on. The majority of clients will qualify for the 10% space for nature uh, for the eco scheme actions. So most people will qualify for that. So, but if they don't, then they'll have to pick one and maybe two eco scheme actions uh, as outlined. Um, ANC payments, it's the same as before, but change the minimum, minimum stocking rate requirement. But again, as I said, most people with the stock they had in 2022 should qualify them going forward. Uh, an active farmer, Again, the most important thing here is to need to show proof of agricultural activity on the farm. So if you don't have stock, you need to show that you're doing other things on the farm and have receipts in relation to that in your own name. And finally, as we mentioned there in the last slide, scrub trees are eligible for payment for less than 50% of the area. 50% uh, of the area, the parcel is scrub. So that's me done, uh, Sean. So I'll, I'll leave it at that and stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Shane, for that. Uh, and now next, we're going to bring Donal uh, back in. Now, I suppose that we have a, a full picture of, of, of everything here. Donal is going to come in and give us a few examples. And he's using um, the, the CAP uh, a calculator that's that's available on the Department of Agriculture website. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Donal. Thanks, Sean. Um, I'm not sure is that displaying and presenter view but look at it it doesn't it doesn't matter that much anyway yeah. um it, it's basically just in order the calculator i'm going to use it's a department of agriculture calculator that they've brought out um a couple of months ago now at this stage um so that's the full website address for the calculator but most people will find it if you just go into google and just google dafm cap calculator and click on payments which i'm just going to show you now shortly so i'll just stop sharing this and I'll go into the calculator itself. You have about five minutes or so. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Hopefully that's coming up okay, Sean, is it? Yeah, yeah, that looks so good. Okay. Yeah. Let's make it. Right. So 
if you go into, if you Google that cal calculator, oftentimes it can go on the home screen. So you, you, won't, you wouldn't be seeing what was showing up there just a minute ago. Just click on payments on the left-hand side. Hopefully you can see the mouse cursor there. So just the euro payment sign and that will bring you into it. So really what this calculator does is it looks for the information in regard to your 2022 BPS application in regards to the number of entitlements you held, the value of those entitlements, the hectares, and it will use that information to predict what your payments will be uh, going forward into, uh, you know, from 2023 right through to 2026. So for the first example, look, I'll just do a couple of examples because Sean was alluding to there now, uh, time is, is against us, but we'll, we'll just do a couple of examples just so that you get a feel for it. If we take um, a farmer with 20 hectares, so 50 acres, so we'll, we'll give this farmer as well 20 entitlements. So the 20 entitlements on 20 hectares, we'll say they're around about average. Um, so if they're around about average, if you include the basic payment, average basic payment entitlement plus the green greening, that that's an important point with this tab here. It's looking for the BPS value plus the greening. You look at the back of your basic payment entitlement form from last year. The entitlements that will be quoted won't include the greening. The entitlement value that will be quoted won't include the greening because the department, because naturally they can't assume that every single farmer is going to claim greening. So they never, they don't quote the entitlements um, including greening. If you want to calculate what the greening payment is on top of the entitlement, you multiply the entitlement value by 1.44. So just get a calculator, key in the value of the entitlement that's on the back page of your BPS form, multiply that figure by 1.44, and that's the figure including greening, that's the figure to put in here. So we'll say, look around about 243, 240, 243. So if 20, 20 entitlements, 20 hectares, uh, 243 euros there, and we'll hit calculate and we'll see what comes up. So on this here, it's given on the left-hand side, it's in 243 euro BPS greening per hectare. Uh, if you multiply that out, that's equal to a payment of 4,860 euros. Now, the BIS entitlement value. So from this line on is the, the new scheme. So BIS entitlement value, it, that's not changing because the entitlement is, is around average. So it's, it's neither going up nor down. You can see it's 145 euro um, and eight cent there, each entitlement value. There's 20 of them. So when that's multiplied by 20, you get this, 2,901. The eco scheme, what that Shane was referring to, so we're assuming this farmer has picked their two options for eco. They're compliant with eco, so they're getting their eco scheme payment. The Chris payment is there. That's the front loading payment that Shane was alluding to too. So there are the three, there are the three segments there, BIS, eco, and Chris. And their payment then comes to, for 2023, €5,304.60. So that farmer will be 444 euros better off than what they were in 2022, last year. Okay, so that's a typical average, a small, small to medium-sized farmer, 50 acres, um, you know, with average entitlements. They're 444 euro, 60 cent better off. Okay, we'll just use, um, we'll just reset this and we'll just key in another example here just to show you. So this time we'll say a farmer has... We'll say a larger farmer, we'll go with 50 entitlements. We'll say 50 hectares. And we'll put their BPS and green and payment in at, we'll say just 380 euros, just to put a figure in here. Okay, so that'd be a little bit higher than average. And we'll hit calculate. Right, so this farmer was getting a payment, you can see there hopefully of 19,000 under the basic payment scheme. The BIS entitlement value, so you can see that entitlement value is higher than average. So under convergence, you can see the entitlement value is going down. So 217 euros in 2023. Um, you can't really see the years there, no, apologies. Well, you can, sorry, just there, 2023 to 191 euro in 2026. So their BIS payment is coming down. The ego payment is staying the same. Okay, that's not guaranteed, but you'd be thinking it shouldn't fluctuate too much uh, between now and 2026. Their CRIS payment is staying the same, but 
because they have higher entitlements values than average, they are they're 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 losing money in this situation. Um, they've lost the cost of three grand in 2023, um, nearly 4,300 euros in 2026, because I suppose those farmers, they're not benefiting to the same extent from Chris, because the Shane was outlining, they're only getting it on the first 30 hectares, they're not getting it on the 50 hectares. Um, they are getting an eco scheme payment all right on the, 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 the full lot, the full 50 hectares, but their entitlements are higher than average, so they're coming down. I'll just do one, do one other very quick example here. Um, we'll say this in this case, farmer with 12 entitlements, we'll say 12 hectares. Um, well, look, we can put in 15 hectares, it doesn't just to mix it up a small bit. Um, it's, it's not really going to make any difference with the overall thing. BPS green and payment per hectare here, we'll say. Uh, this farmer is just getting 190. Um, let's say 170, and we'll just key it in here and hit calculate. So this farmer here, they were getting a payment of just over 2,000 euros uh, under the basic payment scheme uh, last year. Now going forward then, you can see how their BIS money is coming up because their entitlement value is lower than average. Their eco payment is staying the same. Chris is staying the same. This farmer is better off to the tune better off to the tune of 1073 euros in 2023 and 1355 euro 25 cent so look you, you can play around with the examples yourselves um well i suppose specifically just try and work out your own payments anyway that's first and foremost uh, the the department will be publishing a statement of entitlements as i was saying in the not too distant future but that calculator is live there you know anyone can go in and have a look at it look you can see that unfortunately for them the farmers that are really losing out would be the larger farmers higher value entitlements they are getting a bit of a hammering um i, I suppose in regards to their payments um the small to medium sized farmers particularly if they have average to, to middle you know, uh, low to average entitlements, they are they're um, coming up a little bit. Um, so look, I suppose, like anything, um, there's winners and unfortunately there's there's some losers in regards to the way the payment structure is going is going to. Um, so right, Sean, I'll hand back to you. Okay, very very good, Donald. Uh, thank you very much for that. So look at that that website address. You, you have it there, and you know you can go in and put in your own scenario for your own farm and see see how things fare out for you. Um, now I'm going to ask um as was Kieran uh, to come in there. No, uh, just thanks for being there. Just the first question is coming in: Will areas of scrub and trees be eligible for ANC also as well as eco schemes? I answered that one, Donald. Yep. Um, the tree and scrub is not eligible for ANC. It's only grazing ground that will be eligible for that. So no, the answer to that is no. Um, the next question coming in is, can the 170 euro per hectare young farmer payment be claimed on forestry land that's still receiving forestry payments? Okay, um, just in regards to forestry and BPS, uh, yes is the is the short answer, but it's a little bit more complicated that in order to claim entitlements on forestry, the forestry land has to be in the name of the BPS applicant. So there is there has been a couple of cases um, where forestry land might necessarily, you know, that, that let's say you have a, a mother or a father retiring, they maybe are holding on to the forestry land, they'll transfer over the agricultural land, the the son or daughter, whoever's taken over, can claim BPS entitlements on the forestry land because they're not the the owner of the contract. So yes, if if they're if it's eligible for entitlements to draw down that way, yes, it, it is eligible for um to avail of entitlements from the reserve, but it has to be in the name of the applicant, the young farmer scheme applicant. Uh, just the next question is, can you choose different eco measures every year or the ones you choose in year one have to be applied for the duration of the program? No, you can choose different uh, uh, measures every year if you want. So, for example, year one, let's say you pick the one there on the lower stocking rate. Uh, if you want to pick the, on the 1.2 livestock units per hectare, you'll tick the box for the two actions there. So that's that done. And if you stay on the last talking rate for the remaining years of the BIS application, you can keep, keep picking that action and you will qualify. No problem. 
Uh, the next question we have coming in is, I have land which is classified as bog on my previous BPS application. I've been grazing this ground for the past year or so. Is it complex to claim this land? Don't mean that. Should I go with that, Donald? Uh, yeah, land eligibility, you can, Shane, yeah. Yeah. Um, bog land is uh, one of the... Um, when it's down on your BPS application as bog land, it's not eligible for payment. Now, that person's after saying there that they are grazing with livestock. The only thing I might suggest, I don't know how this would work, is that nearly have to take a geotype picture of that to show what type of, you know, what had the grazing on it, you know. But um, basically, like there has been in the past where PT ground or bog ground covered in heather would have gone in for grazing, but when it's designated, you, what you really have to do there is get a change in this designation from bog to grazing ground. So how you prove that, I suppose, all you can do is send in your geotype pictures to try and push that. The only danger worry I'd have there is if the, the, if the BPS or the BIS section now disagrees with you, it could end up as being an overclaim. Mm. Yeah, you overlay. just want, you would want to be careful on it because I think the department yeah. are saying if it is, if it is pure bog in the sense of the word, like a high organic matter soil with heather and that, you know, actual bog, then um, the department, they're not keen to allocate um, class that ground as eligible land, even if it is less than the 50% of Shane is outlining that if, if, if um, of the parcel, that if it's bog, it's bog and it's not, it's, it's not going to be classed as eligible land. And just another question, follow on. What is a geotype picture? Just one farmer wants to know. Um, geotype picture is at the moment, we're the only, uh, we have this, um, it's an app on our phone. Anyone that was familiar with the acre scheme that um, joined it there in the autumn, we'd go out and take a geotype picture on the, of certain actions. What it does is uh, it picks up your GPS coordinates to show exactly uh, that you're in a particular field on that farm and um, you have to see exactly where you took the picture from. So basically, it's, it's I suppose it's foolproof to them to show that you're actually there at that time and to show what sort of what sort what's there on the ground, you know. Um, so that's what your geotype picture is. I'm not sure. Maybe down the line, you know, Donald might come on this one but maybe uh, f clients or farmers will be able to get access to this geotag picture this app down the line I'm not yeah sure. no it is it's coming in it is coming in this year that that either the farmer or the advisor um can take the photo so if the farmer is tech savvy and you know wants to doesn't want to to wait on their advisor to come out they want to take the picture themselves yeah there's no problem in them doing that but obviously if they can't you know we'll be we'll be coming out to assist them and it was just to finish up on it, once you take the picture there and then on the ground, it's sent uh, directly to the department's uh, database. So they have it. So no upload or anything afterwards. So it's actually, it's quite handy. Um, just the next question is for Don Lair, Karen, entitlements from the National Reserve. What if the land with entitlements owned by the leasee and a new entrant farmer renting the land looking to apply to the reserve? Yeah, look, it's, <clears throat> it's look, a, a situation that some leases will find themselves in. Um, look, it's not ideal from their perspective, but really what would be expected of them from the department in that situation would be if the retiring farmer, there was entitlements associated to that land, you know, if that farmer's, let's say, leasing out their whole farm and their, their whole entitlements as well, you know, is, is there, the young farmer would be expected to take those entitlements. So they, they're not precluded from the can still obviously apply to the national reserve um if they're successful they'll get their 170 euro young farmer scheme payment on each hectare and so it's not on the end ent ent entitlements as they will follow the cover that more in more detail in a future webinar later on um but if the entitlements themselves are below average they may be topped up to the national average um but from the department's perspective they, 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 would, they would be asking questions potentially if those entitlements don't form part of the lease. Uh, very good. Just the next question is, one sec there. Um, Donald, could you comment on a farmer? One sec, there's new questions coming in there. Um, could, could you comment on a farmer bringing in new land in the 2023 folio maps? Yep, yeah, so no, no issue bringing in new land. Um, 
Shane, possibly this um, could be uh, your area too, but look, I can answer it anyway when I've started. The, your new entitle, the number of entitlements that you carry in isn't going to change. So if you're a young farmer that's eligible to apply for the new National Reserve, look, you can possibly potentially be, get, allo be allocated entitlements on it that way. If though you're bringing in new land and you're not eligible for the National Reserve, there's no entitlements coming with it, your only option really to claim entitlements on that ground would be to rent or buy in entitlements for it. Just to add on, Donald, but you will get they will get paid on the eco schemes on that new land. Yeah. And if they're under the 30 hectares beforehand, they will get paid up to the 30 hectares on the crisp payment as well. Yeah, so be nice. Point, yeah. There could be look at possibly there could be a hundred and ten ten euros a hectare to be got there on that alone. And that's what I was uh, you know, then if you want to lease in your entitlement after that then or um, if that's the way you want to go, you can do that. But you'd be extra payment on top of it. Uh, just another question coming in for a farmer in regards to the forgotten farmer. Is there any word on the forgotten farmer? As I said, they were going to be looked after in the new cap. Uh, yeah, so look, the forgotten farmers are farmers that would have set up for the first time around about, um, I think it was 2007, 2008, that time, at a time when there was no national reserve to apply for. Um, like the minister has um, promised them that that they will be looked after under this new cap. Now, personally, myself, I haven't heard any details of that yet. Um, Shane, I'm not sure whether you have, but no, I know the, no, the, the no, minister no. has has given assurances that they would be um, looked after, but there's no details as of yet that we're aware of. Um, just one farmer there said, what about wild cover? Will I get anything on that? Because it's upland I used uh, for bird cover and now they're t telling me that I get nothing on it. I use I use good land because I could grow oats and linseed on it during the good weather. Is it? It's upland. I assume it's uh, down as a permanent pasture, I'm guessing, on the on that person's uh, basic payment was down as permanent pasture with the first thing uh, to qualify for wild bird cover in, the, in this scheme. That's the first thing I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. So if it was originally labelled as permanent pasture, now it's in as wild bird cover, it would be eligible for, um, in, in, if it's entitlements, it will cover that uh, area for entitlements if needed. Um, it will also be eligible um, for eco scheme and Chris, up to the 30 hectares on the Chris. That'd be my understanding on that. The only thing that won't be eligible for is the wild bird cover. I'm not sure. A and C don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think the, I, I did read somewhere during Acres. Um, I presume it's current, it's wild bird cover that's proposed for Acres. Now, I'm, I'm just not 100% not sure. But yeah, I, I there, there was talk. Now, it has to be 100% clarified that it would be eligible for A and C as well. Um, now, I, I, I'm not 100% certain on that, but I, I think there... There was, um, I did hear some um, <clears throat> department official mention that it, it um, should be at a NC as well. But look, we won't know for sure until the terms and conditions come out. And the repairing zones came in under that as well. There's talk, they were the same because under acres, because you're fencing them off and you can't graze them. If it's so, lost, if it's lost wild bird cover, obviously you're free to, to reseed it from this year and put it back into grass and get the respective payments in regards to it. Um, just another question. Um, will you know when the when farms are accepted into the new acre scheme? Look, uh, I can answer no. Donald Jeffrey. Look, there's a need. We got a notification there a couple of weeks ago. The people in Chagas were in contact with the people in the Department of the Acre section. Um, talking about, I suppose, in the next week, two weeks, we there'll be letters going out to everybody. That was the last we would have heard of it. Um, just one there, just to confirm space for nature ground scrub is not eligible for ANC payment. Is this correct? Um, that would be correct. Um, someone was that question asked or what exactly does a space for nature in, involve? We get um, okay. Um, space for nature is basically it's your landscape features on your farm. It's your hedgerows. It's your your ditches. It's your your drains. It's your scrub woodland. All of that. 
So all of that, we will measure out on the on the system, the department, on the maps, what percentage of your farm is covered in all of these features. If it's greater than 10%, uh, you're in a good position, which most of, um, look, most of the clients we, we have will probably be in that position. Uh, so that means they won't have to pick any other actions in the eco scheme. So a lot of people will automatically qualify. There's okay. one just a light spot there. It's just in the middle of some other ones. Um, can scrubland be used to reduce nitrate stock and rate? I don't think that when well, we, we answered that one. Um, no is the short answer there. The department will be doing their own different calculation in terms of what's grassland. Um, so just because this class is eligible land for entitlements and for eco and Chris, um, it doesn't mean that you, scrubland can be used to uh, reduce your, your nitrate stock and rate. Just one there on, can flooded land be classed as part of 10% natural habitat? I'm wondering, is it on the BPS maps, is it labeled as flooded land? Uh, now, maybe I suppose what, what that person is probably saying is, it's been deducted on their area, because uh, it has been flooded. But, um, do you know, Dolan, what's your opinion on that one? I'm sorry, Shane, I was just looking through the rest of the questions. No, sorry, just there are flood, can flooded land be classed as part of 10% uh, of the 10% uh, natural habitat or local space for nature, flooded land? Again, it would have to be clarified, but I'd say if it's underwater permanently, um, I, I wouldn't think so. Um, yeah. But like, again, we'll have to wait for terms, conditions, but on that one, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be hanging I, my hopes on that yeah. one now. No, wouldn't be sure on that one, no. Yeah. Where can you check if land is designated in your tour or thinking of renting such a parcel? It's by a lake. Um, going on the National Parks and Wildlife Services maps, and that'd be where to get that, wouldn't it? You get your, yep. your maps, yep. yeah. So, National uh, Parks and Wildlife Service maps, MPWS, yeah. MPWS, go in that, and you should be able to get the maps up for that. Yeah. I see there's one a question here too about um, how much will lease entitlements be worth in 2023. It's a good question. Um, look, it's, it's something that I, I probably should have hit in as part of my hit on as part of my presentation. Um, lease entitlements, if you're going leasing entitlements now, just to be kind of conscious of the fact that you're you're only this before this when and I know that the person asking the question there mentioned 60 percent, which is in around where the where the would have been at. But remember that time that way 60 percent of the bps entitlement plus greening uh shane was outlining farmers can um still claim eco scheme and chris even if they have no entitlements so entitlements that are being traded look i don't know the figure look the market will dictate that but if it was to be around the 60 percent again that would just be 60 percent of the core bis entitlements so which is obviously going to be lower than what it would have been if it includes the green and proportion of the payment as well so um I, I suppose entitlements to rent in you know if you take it the same like for like entitlement last year that probably won't be worth as much because you're only dealing with the bis proportion of the payment not the eco scheme and the chris along with it because that's claimed with the land just another question there. If you had 21 hectares in total, but was only paid for 20 in the past because of deductions due to scrub, will you now get paid in 21 hectares? Well, you will get paid, um, yeah, depending on that parcel. That parcel, as it says, if uh, it's less than 50% scrub in that parcel, uh, whatever scrub is there, then that will all become eligible for payment. Yes. So depending on how your parcel are divided up, but in that scenario, you'd be hoping that that would be the case. But, but, but you know, we might need to rent in an entitlement if you only have 20 entitlements. Yeah, if, if yeah. they want to, or else you, you get paid your eco on it, and you'll get paid your your, your Christmas. And look, at, uh, maybe you had more entitlements already than the land, sure, it depends. But yeah, you can rent one in if you want. Okay, is that all the questions? I think um, I think we have gone through them all there. There's um, one there, and there might be one for Donald. What amount of change will, will there be on national average? Yeah, so the change in national average, that um, I, I suppose the, the national average entitlement, as, as I was saying, is a little bit down in terms of the core entitlement average is a bit down on what the average was last year. But we have to consider that the eco scheme and the crisp payment is going in on top of it. So as I was showing you in the calculator there, the average farmer, 
I suppose with with a small to average size farm with average value entitlements will gain a little bit um this year uh, going forward. Obviously, the higher value entitlements they will be taking a hit, particularly on the larger farms. Lower in value entitlements will continue to come up, so that the the base average entitlement is down, but it's just when it's coupled with Chris and Eco. A lot of farmers, obviously not them all, but um, a reasonable number of farmers, a good proportion of the farmers, I suppose this neck of the woods would be would would be actually um, their payments would be actually increasing as opposed to decreasing. Just one last one there. I see at the bottom. I uh, I started my young farmer scheme last year in twenty twenty two. Will I be entitled to the new payments that are meant to be coming in this year? And the answer to that is yes. On the Young Farm Scheme. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Um, I think we've exhausted all the questions there. Uh, a lot uh, it, it did come in. So, um, yeah, look, we've gone over time as well, but I think it's important to try and cover all those as questions. So, um, our next webinar is going to be on the 3rd of uh, April and uh, we are going to be covering the um, complementary income support for the Young Farmer Scheme. So look at a good few questions there even tonight uh, on that, but we will be going into more detail uh, on the 3rd of April on, on that uh, and we'll be also covering uh, the, the National Re Reserve. So a much enha more enhanced scheme this time around um, uh, compared to uh, the last time. And also on that evening, we'll be also covering uh, the New Suckler Scheme uh, which is the Suckler Carbon Efficiency uh, Program um, uh, coming in under the cap and also the, the Dairy Beef Welfare Scheme. And hopefully we'll have terms and conditions in that announced by the 3rd of April uh, for both of those uh, the areas that we're going to be covering on. So I want to thank you all for uh, attending here tonight. Um, any of you that attended tonight will get a reminder about the next webinar which is uh, would taking place. Uh, and I also just want to draw your um, attention to our um, email address above if you want to submit any uh, questions, further questions to us in our, our phone numbers. And you'll find the recording for this webinar on our YouTube channel. So just uh, go into YouTube and search for Chagas uh, Ruscommon Longford. So thank you very much to uh, Donald McCabe, uh, Shane Devaney and uh, Karen Kinahan. Uh, for for presenting and, and 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 covering questions on that here this evening. So thank you all, and we'll talk to you again on the third of April. All the best. Bye now. Bye all. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Take care.